In this video, which is part 19 of how to create a custom candlestick chart in Chart.js, what we're going to do here is we're going to drag and make this drag item here and we're going to make sure we're going to grab the index numbers of here, the starting point and the ending point. You can see here we get them here. I'm not sure if you see them clearly. There we are. We get these numbers and this will eventually be connected with the zoom functionality. So let's start to look how we can do this. So now let's continue on and what we have right now is our zoom box but of course look at this this is absolutely hideous so what we need to do now is start to at least make sure that this functions a bit more logical and make sure that this here is not a problem for us so we're going to scroll down here and what we need to do here well basically we need to go all the way down to the bottom where our function is and then between here we're going to work and put in another part so basically when we have our drag offset here we get a variable that variable is basically the starting point of or basically it could be the min or the maximum of the new zoom why it will depend because if i do like this this part will be the beginning of the zoom and this will be the maximum but if i do it like this then we have the opposite this would be then the maximum and this is the minimum so we will have some items and later on we have to play a bit more clever with that however we'll cover that later on or in another video so but first of all we must understand that logic of it could be one way or the other so what we're going to do now is we're going to first of all get the item so i'm going to say here constant and i'm going to give this a time stamp and i will just give this time stamp begin and what does the timestamp begin? Well, it's basically this variable here, the drag offset, our starting point, or at least the, the fixed point. And this will be then x.get value, value for pixel, putting in that. All right, so that's the first one. So what this truly does is it will convert this into a proper item, or basically a proper date of the timestamp so if i save that refresh open up developer tab and then if i move you can see here what is happening we get now a timestamp with a lot of different things it's being exact by the millisecond so now we have this timestamp but this timestamp is very very exact meaning it has the minutes the seconds the milliseconds and i don't want that what i only need is basically the day so what we're going to do here now is just simply convert this and we're going to say a constant and we're going to say a da, day time stamp and this day time stamp will be and we're going to say here new date and we're going to just grab this item here and then we're going to say a dot set hours put this on zero hours zero minutes zero seconds and zero milliseconds so once we did this we will get the exact date or specifically the midnight 12 midnight on any of these days here and this is important because later on with our array we need to match them and that's the only way how we can match this so now we have this and let me just show you so we have a clear understanding of what we have now move that one and say put it there and maybe I can just say here begin because I might need another one later for the ending date so I'm going to save that refresh open up now here there we are so we get here the exact dates here and those dates are very close to our array dates so now I have this one then what I want to do here is uh, let's see we can put in here the, well, if this is the begin part so I guess we should say here the begin item so what we can say here constant and then we're going to say here start drag point and the reason why start drag point is basically the starting moment of the dragging so we're going to put in there and i'll say that this should be we're going to grab this or well let's grab this first because what i want to do is i want to search within this array if ever the value that we have in here matches so we're going to say here dot index of 
I'm going to say here and uh, let's see we have this one index of and then I'm going to put in here this variable once we get this I'm going to copy this and get here the this value save this then refresh so now if I drag you can see here I start here and you can see it says number two meaning index two which is correct because between if I'm not mistaken it starts from this point to this point it will start or this is from this point to here is zero this to here is one and then from here to this ending point here is two so if I click here this should be two then this should be three and here we have six and then probably if I hit or I need to grab really the ending point here so that would be a slight challenge for me but that's all right now I will just ignore that one in that case that's the only one I can ignore or I have to ignore for now so now we have this this is already clear but what I want to do as well is besides this I want to have an ending point as well so I'm going to copy this I'm going to do exactly the same here except now I'm going to say this will be timestamp end I'm going to say you're not drag but this should be drag delta with capital D and then once we have here this should be end I'm going to put this where we reference to end and then we have here drag point end and then begin stamp which will be end as well save refresh and now if I drag this uh, all right interesting it shows me this but I don't have a console log so let's make sure we have a console log let's grab them both so we should have always within the range of our arrays so we're going to put that in there put this one in here save this refresh so here this should be probably index one all right and then as we move you can see here oh and that's the only thing of course so I need to do this again but then upper here all right so as you can see here this works nicely and then here only thing here and this is an important item here we have an issue you see here negative one why negative one well remember we're using here the time series what happens we skip here basically the weekends I know this is not exactly the weekend I think the weekend was 2 and 3 January but we skip two days here as so we emulate a weekend and that is now becoming an issue because it doesn't understand that this here is a variable but that date does not exist so for that we have still some work to do and in the next video we're going to focus on how we can solve this crucial issue here